Welcome back to another Abs Daily News with your hockey coach, your coach, Frenchie. Today, episode number 71. I'm going to tell you why the Montreal Canadiens did not select Shane Wright. Don't go nowhere. You know the drill. Please click on the like, subscribe to the show. Below this video, tell me what you think about the episode number 71. Let's dive in. Here we go, guys. Episode number 71. Abs, why not Shane Wright? Montreal development, culture. I want to finish about Ren Pullen, what I'm thinking about him. The situation with Pierre-Luc Dubois. The Rockets signed three new players and finally... Some news about the NHL news today. Why the Montreal Canadiens did not select Shane Wright like the New Jersey Devils and Arizona Coyotes. They all three teams pass on Shane Wright. What we discovered, what we heard from Elliot Feldman and Chris Peters, two experts in hockey, they said his attitude in general was not appreciated about his peer and his behavior or body language was not the top notch from Shane Wright. They said his work it sick at the combine was not excellent. And finally, he does not have that kind of fire, a passion about his sport called hockey. They are, of course, all three different aspects of what Shane Wright did not be select. And finally, He did not want to play an overseas last year after he missed the full year with the COVID-19. When this happened, he could take a chance to go play in SHL or on a league of Finland. He could go over there and consist to play hockey last year, but he completely stopped to play hockey, and that's put him behind compared to any other players in the NHL Draft 2022. So really surprised to hear this from the people are not involved in hockey like a scout or general manager or a coach, but people as outside mention about his body language of Shane Wright. So uh, really interesting to hear about this. Let's move on now, guys, about the development model of the Montreal Canadian. Uh, because some of you, or many people, was not happy about the Jeff Petrie trade or two days ago. Remember, I'm going to go back all the way in January when they hire Jeff Gordon. After he got Ken Hughes, then they select a head coach, Martin St. Louis. They surprised a lot of people. They was not expect St. Louis with no experience to become a coach. Then after that, they hire Adam Nicola. Then they hire the analytic and chef, Christian Boucher. Then, recently, they hired Desonier and McMillan. Now, my point to you, I want to say to you, is all those people are working on one department for the Montreal Canadian. It's called the development. And Ken Hughes really believe, he really trusts, he have a confidence about all of them. He, he believe when they draft someone or they trade for someone, Those people involved with the development is going to help this player to reach his full potential. One thing Martin said, we always said, the players never stop learning and improving. It's not because you reach your NHL, play at 22, 25, 30, 32, stop to not learning and improving. He really believed at any moment during his career, you learn and get better. Then they said from Ken Hughes, the progression of the player come first with the maturity as the players. And then is, of course, the environment around him. So if when you have two assets, the maturity and the environment around, that would make the players better. Then what happening with the trade is this part. First of all, the Montreal Canadiens really want to build a culture of development mod model. This is really important for them. Secondly, Can you, as an agent, have a lot of relationship with Jeff Gordon, been in our since 2000, with other people on both sides, on the management and on players. Mike Madison was a client from Ken Hughes when he was agent. Of course, one of them, or few of them, it was Vincent Acabi and Chris 
Le Tank et Patrice Bergeron. So when he was looking to trade for Mike Madison, he really have a great long conversation with Chris Le Tank to know and to talk more about Mike Madison. We know Madison's born in Lac Saint Louis, play in, in, in the backyards of the Ken Hughes and Boston NCA, and he become his client. So he took a lot of information before he made the trade. Release everything the plus to his development group. Example, he really believe on Martin Saint Louis. He's really the, the catalyzer of the development model. He's teaching for Martin Saint Louis is really about the individual players, not on the group only. He really believe one to one. And as a hockey player, Gallagher, he was what he was impressed. It was the way Martin Saint Louis take a time to teaching the players. So it's not put the player in the framework of the system, the two one two, the one two two. But he led the player to teaching them one to one. I one thing I was said to become a great coach in hockey, you have to have a great relation with your players. You have to show them how much you care about them. You have to show them how much you trust them, and you have to show them how much you believe on them. When you put all this together, they are the recipes of a great team when you show that kind of quality you have as a coach for the player. Let's move on now for Rand Poland. I think yesterday I talked about Rand Poland, but I think I did not go deep. I believe he's not a boss. When I said that, whatever he was draft first around at 25th, it's not because Montreal trade him, he's not a good hockey player. He's been victim of different things. First of all, he's number the game. He did not play a lot of game in the last three years. Honestly, he became a regular for the Montreal Canadiens last season. And he got stuck in the development for the Montreal Canadiens. Montreal did not put their energy for the last five, seven years on a development. It was not what Timmins and Bergeron believe. And I think it was one of the players to not take advantage of the lack of development for the Montreal Canadiens. Now you have to add the COVID-19 two years ago. Then you have to add the injuries. Remember, he started the first year in the American Hockey League with an injury after a great start. Year number two, same situation happening to him. He had a difficult time to recovery, and that pushed him his development behind Copa Sleep to other players, and that would not help him. Then he went to the Montreal Canadiens, but you know Montreal with a four line is really unstable because you get fun players on the left side, on the right side, so he really struggled with that kind of situation with the Montreal Canadiens. I believe the, Pens, the Penguins going to give him a great chance to perform, or to reach his better full potential who he is. He really could become a bottom six great hockey player in NHL. If he can improve his skating, that will be helping him a lot. But I think he can score 10, 15 goals. He's really smart, intelligent players. His IQ is really, is really high, and I think he could be a good hockey player. But unfortunately for the Montreal, he was stuck and the uh, ladder of the center now. We know we have Zuzki, they were wrecked. Dak, Jake Evan, we draft two more center, and we have already some center in the pipeline for the Montreal Canadiens. So I think Montreal decided it was better opportunity right now to let him go. It gave him a chance, of course, for Poland, but unfortunately it was deep and the depth of the chart, and I think that's better for him to be with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, let's go on with the Pierre-Luc Dubois. I'm not going to go deep on this one over there. What can you say? I'm all going to trade for him if it's the right deal. We're not going to trade Carfield, Zuski, the first round pick 2023. 20, That's not going to happen. Now, one situation happened yesterday for Pierre Dubois. He accepted his RFA salary. So what do you mean by this coach? But because he do that, now he can become a UFA next year. So that's simple. So he will he save one year earlier to become UFA that would give Montreal a possibility to sign him. For me, Pierre Luc Dubois is to be patient. Don't rush everything right now. We don't really need him. We're not a team playoff right now. I would not do that. And if you deal, if ever you're thinking to deal, please deal with dropping salary. And honestly, between you and me, wait until he become a free agent. Give asset for him. Just wait when he's going to be 
He want to play Montreal. He want to play for Martin Saint Louis. He believe now is the right decision for him. And see, let him have a good year when we beg. Show to the Montreal what kind of player you are, and then let Montreal to pick you up at the right time. Signed three players yesterday. Gabriel Bourque uh, resigned with uh, Laval. Same situation with Philippe De Rosi. And then uh, the goaltender, Joe Verbitzik, uh, signed his first contract in professional with the Laval Rocket. Uh, and around the league in NHL, we have a couple new signatures. Edmonton Oilers signed Mathias Janmark from the Vegas Golden Knight, a one-year contract at 1.25. St. Louis resigned the defenseman Mokola for $1.9 million for one year. Toronto Maple Leaf resigned Pierre Egval, $2.25 million for one year. It was the RFA, both of them. And then the Florida Panthers signed the UFA Del Zotto, the veteran defenseman at 750. Same situation for all the UFA yesterday. Kadri Nidereader, Kessel, Klemberg, Rodriguez, Maut, Enen, and Milano Estelle. That's it. Episode 71 over. Hopefully you enjoy it. But before we leave, don't forget to click on the like, subscribe to the show below this video. Please leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about the episode 71 of the Abs Daily U News. And finally, yes, you have greatness inside of you. Have an amazing, great day, everybody. Mm -hmm.